Thank you very much. So we are just in time for uh, the next session, IoT and Edge Computing in the Green Digital Transformation. What we will be doing in this session is we will be discussing and giving you information and insights on the AI and, uh, and the IoT roadmap. Actually, this is a major result of the NGIOT project um, with a lot of uh, information and uh, insight and foresight on the developments on the IoT space, how it supports the um, uh, twin transformation of uh, organizations uh, and also a glimpse in, in the future what lies ahead in terms of IoT, uh, uh, including uh, some action, actionable recommendations, policy recommendations, but recommendations to different uh, stakeholders. So um, we will we will give you insights on the NGIOT roadmap, but we invite everybody to download the roadmap and read also the details. Uh, now to do so, uh, we have with us um, uh, Svetoslav Mikhail from the Internet of Things uh, E4 uh, unit of G Connect, DG Connect, uh, who is going to give us the, the policy context. Uh, and then we've got also a technical presentation from Francisco Molina from Archimedes Solutions and a panel discussion. So without any further ado, I would like to give the floor to um, Svetoslav for giving us uh, uh, the uh, insight from the European Commission mainly focused on the policy context. As Vetoslav, the floor is yours. So, uh, yes, good afternoon. My name is Tsar Michal. I'm a policy officer at DigiConnect uh, Unit E4, which is dealing with Internet of Things, uh, the European Commission. And uh, I'm focusing on interoperability, standardization, mainly in the energy area, but also in the other areas. And I've worked for a number of years there with OSC, et cetera, also on interoperability within the smart cities. Um, and today I'll give just some components of the EU perspective on IoT and edge computing for the green digital transition. If we're looking at what are the trends, of course, very familiar to all of you, but just again, a kind of reminder, not something that necessarily is linked to the European institutions, but we are responding to the, to the trend of the market. So we have this moving from from the cloud, which is more or less well developed now toward the edge or the edge cloud and then the far edge, the, uh, the, the very devices. So it's very kind of a not very distinct uh, this, um, distinction between the cloud, what is in between and the very far edge. And then of course, these things at the edge, they also have computing power. They can also run application, they can aggregate data, they can do other stuff. So of course, if we want to, I mean, this is happening anyway, moving to the edge. So if we want to have a coherent Internet of Things, Edge Cloud Continuum, et cetera, then we need to, to federate and, and to orchestrate the resources at the very edge. So that's kind of a, the notion of the trends that are happening. Um, what is the commission doing? Well, one of the things that he's doing is he prepared this European strategy for data, which was aiming at achieving different goals, but say, I mean, it's so starting from the European Fit for Digital Age priority, the Green Deal, the Green Deal for Europe priority, the attempt to have technological leadership and sovereignty, to have strategic autonomy, et cetera, et cetera. And then what is it? I mean, it's many things, but it's a more strategic approach to enable stakeholders to gather, store, pool, share, and analyze data securely. Um, if you look, I mean, it's, it has a number of actions and a number of uh, co-actions that are happening in parallel in order to, to achieve the goals of, of the strategy. But if you look at some two areas of action that we have, so one is cloud actions. So there we develop cloud rulebook, the co-investment in cloud to edge services, cloud federation marketplace, etc. So there. You see, we're developing two instruments. So one is the IPCI on, uh, on the cloud and edge. So important project, common European interest. And then together with the member states and everything. And then there is the European Alliance for Industrial Data, Edge and Cloud, where we have a lot of industrial and other players that have signed and are more are joining towards the common goal. 
Now, on the, on the other side, we have also the, the data actions. So we have legislation, such as the Data Governance Act, the Data Act, the Co-Invest, and there is the co-investment in new data spaces, which is happening within the Digital Europe program or the digital program. Uh, and to, to this end, we are also working with other stakeholders, such as you see here, for example, GAIX, on use case technical architecture federation and interoperability standards and so on and so on so it's not it's not a commission or eu uh, initiative only it's everybody's initiative it's all the stakeholders together all the european stakeholders together um there are a number of actions that we have planned or, or we have already in the process of implementing uh, within say the well, the horizon europe or the research and innovation area some of them are horizontal, some are vertical, et cetera. They cover from the far edge through edge to the cloud, hardware, software, and so on and so on. Uh, one of the things that already the selection ran and the projects were selected and there will be a gap and a pad. Um, already the projects will be starting soon. So this is the area of future European platforms for the edge, so meta operating system which is the idea of, again, as I said, we need to orchestrate this, this IoT devices, these edge uh, um, devices. And in order to do this, we have requested a number of projects to develop this meta operating system that will be managing the resources on a dynamic basis and allocating uh, processing capacity where it's most needed. And then we have other couple of actions in the horizontal, which are the environmental tools for decentralized intelligence at the edge. We have the cognitive plan framework, which is about AI enable computing continuum, et cetera. And you see the other actions such as the open source for cloud-based services. This is coming also this year. And then, then the emerging solutions. So we are working very heavily into achieving the goal of, of uh, having a very uniform cloud edge continuum and a very, very well orchestrated edge network on the basis of IoT and AI. Again, if you look at what the European strategy for data is doing in order to enable the different data spaces, because um, yes, the, the strategy is talking about data spaces as well, and I'll show more or less the picture on the next slide, but it's uh, is the idea that we, within several sectors, and you see here that says nine critical sectors, health, environment, energy, mobility, finance, and so on, uh, to have the possibility to organize the access to data, to make it accessible to everybody with fair terms, easily accessible, easily understandable licensing and everything. So this, of course, is aided by all the other actions that we have, like you know the GDPR, which introduced rules and values to be respected within the data area. Then we had the free flow of non-personal data that we introduced. This was a very important step towards the data space and so on and so on. And so this availability of high quality data to create an event, this is in the heart of the data space. And then what are the rules to access and use this data in a fair, practical and clear way? So this, these are the main kind of corners of what to do. Then, uh, in this, I will move it actually here. Um, so what is happening there? We have uh, the so-called high value data set from the public sector. So within these different nine sectors that I mentioned, which needs to be made accessible, but of course, ideally it has to go further than this. This is the very start of it. Um, it's driven by stakeholders. Yes, it's not a commission thing as I mentioned already at the beginning rich pool of data varying degree of openness indeed i mean we don't expect that every data will be accessible in the same exactly way i mean because data is different and its sensitivity is different its value is different and so on and so on we will take care of the governance but the, the whole initiative will take care of the governance so contract licenses access right usage rights etc there will be technical tools for data pooling and sharing um, and then within the digital program also there is the so-called data space support center which has i mean i had a specific slide on it which i'm not going to show you the limited time but it's coordinated the development of data spaces assuring common standards interoperability tools and so on it has a lot of a lot of 
aspects that it covers. But it's it's basically because these data centers, no matter if they're in the energy, mobility area, or health or something, they have a lot of things in common on one side. And on the other side, they need to be exchanging data with each other. I mean, it doesn't make sense that you do something about the aging people, which is health related within the home. And you are unaware about this when you're dealing with the energy in the home. So it's really, it's really dependent one on the other. So they, they need to be able to exchange in a very uniform way information. And that's why they, they need to be based on common principles. And of course, being based on common principles brings down the price and, uh, and increases the take up. So the technical infrastructure for the data spaces that will be taken care of as well. Um, it's the edge and cloud services, smart middleware solutions, so one, one on top. There's a marketplace where we'll be able to find this data. And you have seen this in many of the projects that we'll be running in the data area. They always deal with this marketplace and we always request it. It's building up also on high performance computing. Of course, it's using AI. Everything will be using AI in the future. And then we have also, so, so there are a couple of things in the AI area that have been uh, funded within the first program of uh, digital program. So one is, a, well, there are more, but the two mentioned here, are AI on demand platform, and then the AI testing and exploitation facility. So the, the possibility to, to create, test and experiment with different AI models in several areas, like uh, for example, in the, in the mobility and energy area, which is covered under the cities and so on. Uh, I'm not going to go into details because I think this must have been covered or will be covered, but uh, they, the, the project, the Creation Support Action Open AI created a design principle for data spaces. So this is already giving the, 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 the ground for the work that will be done within this year program and also within Horizon Europe because in the area of energy, the approach was first to have a innovation actions within Horizon Europe that will be preparing the deployment in the digital program. So there, I mean, again, I'm not gonna describe this in very detail, but you see there are four design principles. There is a high level architecture. There are building blocks, which are covering technical business, organizational governance aspects. They have looked into the design principles and at several specific areas, such as manufacturing, health, energy, and agriculture. The governance and business models, as I mentioned already a couple of bullets before, there is a roadmap, and then there is the, the, the ecosystem that will be supporting the data space. So fairly full picture. So, and it's uh, available on the web, so you can always go and, and consult it if you haven't done so yet. Um, what will be used in all this interoperability, in all these data spaces? Uh, well, one approach that we have applied in the past and we think will be working in this area is the minimum interoperability mechanisms or principle, or sometimes called minimum viable product, uh, which, which means that we have minimal but sufficient capabilities which are needed to achieve good enough interoperability of data systems and services. I'm talking case in point because I'm very familiar with it and because they it established this this idea is the synchronicity project with the open agile smart cities behind, uh, which is about scaling up with the power of the memes, so the meme probability mechanisms, AI and IoT enabled market ready services. So they, they, they tested this, they piloted this in 50 services in 21 cities, which can again can be found in their leaflet and on their website. Um, the focus was on cross-domain interoperability because it was a smart city project and uh, it was about cross-connecting the different silos. It is supposed to be easy, simple, quick and cheap to implement and easy to test for compliance. Um, it was based on existing standards. Some of them were, as the work was going, were, were, were uh, modernized, uh, supplemented, etc. But, you know, standards such as NGSILD, the SARA for cities and so on. Then it was also kind of taking inspiration of the pivotal points of interoperability, which were developed together with the US. And it was heading for develop, development of a viable market, cutting costs, minimizing risk, and preventing vendor lock-in. And maybe to finish, 
uh, my presentation. I just want to say a, a, an ongoing call that has, was just launched and will be closing on the uh, 22nd of March. It's about uh, preparation of work on operational digital platforms within the Connected Europe facility. So the idea is to have cross-border platform, which will be based on what I just described, the same principle of interoperability, et cetera. And will be, this, this very call is about coordination support action that will be pre preparing the works project, the deployment of such pro platform within energy, mobility, or combined. Uh, and that this will be the CSA to decide where exactly the, the implementation will be done. The CSA will also prepare the different architecture principles, how the work will be done, who, what will be the governance schemes and so on. So we are going again, you see kind of a small model, if I can call it small, of what I described as a data space, but implemented, and it's really a deployment program. So we're not experimenting, testing, or anything, it is deployment. And it needs to have certain scale. It will be described within the text so this is something that I think will be a very nice implementation going into market for what we have, all the things that we have discussed before that. So if you're interested, of course, there is a web link, you can go and check it out. And yes, the, the deadline is 22nd of March and the, the budget is about 4 million, which for coordination and support action is a very good budget. And of course, this will be bringing out for the next stage, the deployment project will be way more than this and will be involving many European countries and their interconnections. So that was what I wanted to say. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Mikhailov, as Vetoslav, if I may, uh, for this uh, uh, important Polish information. It's very, uh, very useful for our community, uh, also for, for this call on ODP. And I think now we can go into, into more technical perspective. So we'll hear again about uh, uh, edge computing data spaces and how they, uh, they support the European strategies and the, and the European values uh, in the data. So I'd like to, to give the floor to uh, Francisco Molino uh, to give us this more uh, technical perspective and relevant recommendations. Francisco, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jan um, and Svet. That was a good presentation. Um, should I share my screen, right? I think let me know when you're seeing it. See it. Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, uh, my presentation today is, is it full screen now? Um, there it is. Um, it's basically about the roadmap for IoT, how how it involved it's it is involved with IoT and edge computing and the Green digital transformation. Now, just wanted to point out that in here um, we can find uh, two of our colleagues also, Adriane and Federico, who were also very involved in the creation of the roadmap, which is available online in the NGIoT website. Um, so yeah, the analysis was based on a market research and business modeling at first. So as the main takeaways is, uh, where are the projections for IoT and Edge in which uh, different market um, projections based on, on, on equipment, based on growth of the number of devices, um, all point out to you know, a, a strong growth uh, in terms of IoT and uh, edge in both technologies and Europe is, uh, of course, one of the um, main players in the global landscape. Now, um, another takeaway from this analysis was that when we look at the edge landscape, we see that European players are um, present in the, the different uh, parts of this landscape. You now, going from the devices up to the applications and services, and um, other studies pointed out as uh, when you see these, these technologies as separate bubbles, um, we see how the lines are blurring and they start interacting and getting into the, what used not to be their, their core. Um, so yeah, there's also um, very important in the global landscape um, alliances for and organizations that are of course present in Europe as well. Um, another important point is that network operators are the front runners and are the ones that are investing the most in this um, 
going from hardware to uh, platform side. So um, after a couple of years of uh, making this CSA, um, we concluded with the roadmap in some key priorities. Um, there are, of course, priorities uh, in general, uh, but also domain specific now, specifically for this um, webinar, uh, it's important to point out the ones in the uh, smart cities and communities. And then very aligned with um, Svet's presentation, we see that still uh, there are challenges and barriers. Uh, and well, of course, the, the key organizations that we can see on the, on the right side of the screen. But then uh, the current state and trends that were um, also briefly described with the synchronous city um, slide of Svet, uh, we see that there is an European ambition to develop, uh, to deploy 10,000 um, climate neutral and secure edge nodes, which is um, a quite ambitious um, objective. And then part of the priorities and actions um, concluded by the, by the CSA was to um, embed, uh, embed edge in, uh, in, in cloud strategies. So making this paradigm shift more and more close to a reality. Um, through partnership across the demand and the supply side. And of course, open source is one of the, of the main players in this aspect. Now, we divided the priorities in three main aspects. So the first one is in general, the economic and policy priorities. And we see how in the roadmap, uh, we have um, this list over here. Um, which includes the support for SMEs and startups, the data as critical assets, and as you can see, digital skills and competencies is still a priority to be tackled, especially when you go um, domain on the domain-specific side. Trust, which is uh, going beyond the GDPR. Um, of course, the legal part, the interoperability, interoperability and replicability, which we can see with the memes. Um, and the innovation procurement and sovereignty. So those are the priorities identified. Of course, more, this is just a brief description, more detail is in the uh, roadmap. Okay, let me see. When it comes to our DNI, um, Fede was the one putting it all together, but I will summarize in the, um, dividing the, the priorities into um, technologies, basically, we have the IoT priorities. These are just the high level titles, of course, the autonomous IoT solutions, uh, the human and sustainable developments in the loop. Um, and when we go to the interaction of IoT and edge computing with other technologies like 5G and 6G networks, we find that to make this um, possible or to make the objective possible, we need to have and uh, create a reliable, low cost, of course, sustainable, and scalable, most importantly, IoT networks. When it comes to AI and, and machine learning, we see that um, the priorities in data go from data processing architectures to decentralized, um, trusted and effective decisions for IoT, of course, with the processes and important as well, the monetization models, right? Because technologies need to go hand in hand with the market. Um, for cloud architectures, uh, also an um, habilitator for the uh, implementation of IoT and edge technologies, we see um, collaborative orch orchestration, energy aware cloud to edge infrastructures, and the advanced electronic, uh, electronics and cybersecurity are also key priorities in our DNI. I just wanted to move quickly through this so that we can go to the key recommendations, which we grouped by program and specifically by topic. So when we mapped uh, the recommendations for the Horizon Europe program, we see that data value uh, and the recommendations, the priorities surrounding data value tell us to sustain the activities while increasing focus on the data, on the data generated by IoT while going on the research of how to make this data processing using the, the, the IoT as a source, both at the software and the hardware star, uh, the stats, right? So research on this data processing um, mechanisms uh, on both the software and the hardware. 
when it comes to IoT networks, um, same as mentioned with the priorities, low cost, scalable IoT networks. And of course, when we have when we want to have a green focus, we go into efficiency uh, in reducing energy impact uh, of the networks, right? Now, very related to the previous one is the cost efficiency of solutions. Uh, we propose to reduce the, well, the cost of management of these complex IoT platforms by um, semi-automatic and automatic scale approaches. And of course, the process interoperability so that uh, you can have, you know, do not sacrifice this interaction because of um, the cost efficiency of the solution. Now, passing to data management, um, the recommendations are uh, to go into ready to use AI algorithms, in different scenarios, and of course, to unify data processing from cloud, passing to embedded processing units uh, in the sense of going into federated uh, interactions between cloud and edge. Uh, following the recommendations on the edge computing, um, of, sorry, for the Horizon Euro program, we have the IoT operating systems. Now, the meta, meta operating systems are now on the scope, but eventually um, the focus should have to go on beyond these meta operating systems. Um, my colleague Fede could elaborate a lot on their, under that uh, topic, by the way. <laughs> and um, passing to the IoT integration with other technologies. Um, same as, as, as stated before, those are habilitators uh, to go hand in hand with, with the IoT and edge technologies. Um, artificial intelligence, as Beth mentioned, it's, it's going to be everywhere in the nearby future. Leverage the distributed ledgers and other technologies in an orchestrated way uh, so that you know, um, we can gather the results from the technologies uh, as fast as possible. And of course, to make it uh, human understandable. Now, uh, under this umbrella, it's also the um, increasing scalability and reducing latency. Uh, then further down the road, uh, the IoT platforms should introduce the dynamic orchestration of, of this AA processes and interaction between different technologies on a larger scale. Now, of course, also the machine and human interaction, um, part of the, of the developments that are being done and part of the recommendations are to go into including the augmented reality and these other technologies uh, like digital twins, make tech, tactile internet as well, uh, but without um, leaving on, on the side, the, the sustainable side of, of, um, of the IoT uh, and have it sustainable by design. Now, another important recommendation is the IoT trials. Now, um, the large scale pilots have been a success in, in different um, domains. However, um, the proposal is to transfer this experience to other domains um, as well that are important um, and invest on experimental infrastructure for, for cloud edge solution. Uh, the last recommendations for the Horizon Europe are to center on the future proof security and privacy by design uh, on the IoT architectures um, to go to green and sustainable IoT um, by also um, promoting the IPR protection and patent promotion. Now, this goes with the IoT miniaturization, uh, of course, part of the efficiency in, in terms of hardware and the energy harvesting in terms of, of, of um, well, the energy consumption of, of the networks when you go to, to big scale. Also, the project impact and promotion assessment. So many projects are being developed. However, uh, the recommendation is to uh, promote the, 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 the application for patents. And of course, covering, if possible, the IPR protection costs and go with cascade funding. Um, part of the, of the CSA and important part was the preoccupation with the time to market of the different research projects. So, there's a specific recommendation for that so that the time to market can be reduced and the research projects can go to market um, a more, you know, on an easy, more easy way and faster way. Um, yeah, and these are the last ones. So we go through secure and ethical IoT. 
Um, just wanted to go quickly, data models interoperability, very close to what Svet mentioned in the previous presentation, and to go with the innovation transfer to scalability and sustainability, more specific points over there, uh, you, we can find them in the, in the roadmap in the website. Now, there are also recommendations for the, um, sorry, this is uh, wrong, this is not the Horizon Europe program. Um, I will have to correct that. But we go into the independence and sovereignty, the IoT skills and development, um, the open innovation, cooperation, standardization, large scale research infrastructure, and the large brand connectivity of the program of Connecting Europe. Um, so those are the recommendations for the roadmap for the specific programs. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, perhaps Jon will give you the floor. And thank, I you, believe... thank you very much, Francisco, for the Thanks. presentation. I suggest that in the next 10 minutes, all together with, with our two speakers, but also I would like to have uh, Federico and Adriana in, in the discussion, uh, goes, uh, discussing a little bit the roadmap. And uh, I would like to, to, to start with um, a couple of questions to, to Federico to Federico uh, about the, the aspect of sustainability and environmental performance on um, IoT. The previous decade was the decade of the digital transformation. Now, this decade, uh, when we build IoT systems or IoT cloud systems, we should not just think about uh, just about the latency, the performance, the real-time aspect, but also the sustainability, right? The greenness. Uh, aspect, the, the energy efficiency. So what are the recommendations of the, the more specific recommendations of the roadmap? How you should change IoT programs to contribute to this uh, direction, not to be just technically efficient, but also green and sustainable. What, what do you recommend there, uh, Federico? Yeah, uh, thanks, John. So uh, I, the, the, the topic of uh, uh, IoT and sustainability is, of course, uh, quite wide, and uh, uh, it's uh, let's say it can be a two sides of the coin. Somehow, I mean, IoT is an enabler to generate uh, uh, solution to support sustainability. But on the other side, as you were mentioning, the point is also to understand how much an IoT uh, infrastructure is uh, sustainable. And um, of course, uh, uh, this uh, is reflected in uh, different layers in the, in the stack. And uh, you have uh, uh, the network, uh, the uh, serving side, uh, and the computational aspects. And uh, all of them need to be taken into consideration if you want to kind of ensure that all your IT infrastructure is uh, sustainable. And uh, of course, <clears throat> we have been seeing a lot of trends uh, starting from the lower level on the hardware side uh, uh, for uh, uh, pushing uh, hardware architecture that are uh, more energy efficient. And uh, despite, of course, the trend was uh, not uh, driven by the need uh, for reducing energy uh, uh, consumption, but more to reduce the cost of uh, computational infrastructure, but still you get this as a side benefit. And uh, it's clear that, for example, now we have uh, a lot of investment toward uh, uh, ARM-based architecture and other uh, computing system that compared to previous uh, hardware architecture are more energy efficient, but this is not uh, indeed uh, uh, enough. And uh, especially if you consider that more and more we are introducing workloads that, mm -hmm. uh, are, uh, 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 that are not only in the cloud side, but also on the edge that are more computationally uh, EV, especially in relation to artificial intelligence uh, computing. And this uh, clearly demands for trying to better specialize the uh, computing efficiency, especially for these uh, high uh, intense uh, workloads in the, in the hardware side. So you are saying, um, uh, sorry, Federico is another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you are saying that um, uh, this shift from cloud to the edge is also key for sustainability, right? So yeah, absolutely, edge, absolutely. I mean, environment, the I/O, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. reducing emissions. I don't know. Make, make yeah, a comment. yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, when you move to the edge, uh, things get e a bit more complex somehow. Than uh, you know, it's easy, for example, to compute. Uh, uh, how much energy you are using and how much efficiency you are inside the data center. You know, it's a closed border, no? But when you go in an open world, uh, things become more, uh, more complex because uh, there are things you cannot measure today. So for example, we don't know exactly uh, uh, in real time what is the impact of moving some data over the network. So of course there is work to be done on the measuring and understanding of the problem, in, especially in the case where more and more uh, edge distributed architecture will be uh, appearing over the networks. And, uh, um, and this relates also to the fact that probably there is the need to push for uh, policies from the authorities to open this data. Uh, and actually this is also today the, the, a problem from um, cloud perspective infrastructure because while uh, you have a lot of uh, information on the monitoring of your workloads in terms of uh, CPU load, uh, memory load, you have no access. The provider do not give you any access to any information related to the footprint in terms of uh, energy efficiency or what are the sources of energy that are currently used by wo your workloads. This is all uh, not transparent and not even standard standardized in terms of uh, data sharing. So. Moving toward edge, this has become extremely important if you want to be able to understand uh, by combining the different pieces of infrastructure you're using to create your IoT edge infrastructure that might be private or public clouds or uh, devices you own to understand exactly what is the uh, footprint you're having on the energy consumption. And the other element which is important to not forget is of course the computational uh, uh, services that you use on top. And um, the problem is uh, uh, maybe quite neglected today, but it's true that, uh, uh, you know, we are getting used to the uh, high availability of uh, computing capacity. So we don't uh, look anymore as in the first years of uh, computer science, the efficiency of, uh, of the code we write, but in terms of energy consumption, different uh, uh, programming uh, languages as totally different energy efficiency. And uh, uh, we probably, if you want really to be sure that things are not going to be uh, energy inefficient, we need also to start looking into this. And actually this is quite a problem for uh, data scientists at the moment because the most used uh, programming language there is Python. And uh, you might be aware that is uh, one of the most energy inefficient languages ever, especially if you That's use the uh, official uh, uh, C Python version uh, compared to other uh, uh, version. Uh, but uh, so there is still a lot of things to be done in this sense. Thank you, Federico. Very good. Another topic, you know, reading the, the roadmap, another topic which is stressed there, and it was in uh, Svetoslav's uh, presentation, is uh, digital autonomy. So I'd like to turn, you know, to Andrian to, to, to uh, welcome Andrian in the discussion, and maybe, you know, later on, uh, Svetoslav, on, on the following question. What are really the challenges for digital autonomy in Europe, right? Is it, is it technical, you know, building the autonomous system? Is it, is it ethical? because we are having uh, regulations and it seems that uh, trust is very important and unless people trust the autonomous systems, it's not gonna happen. So what are the main challenges and what, what is the take of the roadmap on, on the digital autonomy topic? Thank you, uh, John. I think it's a combination of, of the technology of, of the ecosystem and, and of the human. Uh, centered, uh, more the human centered factors like, like trust. So of course, infrastructures are extremely important. Um, we also uh, need to focus on, on the resources we already have uh, in Europe. Um, we focused a lot on, on bringing the different players together. Um, so to make sure that also through open source and open innovation that we also can get the, the smaller players uh, on board. 
Um, so that's that's really important. Of course, we also need to focus on 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 the uptake uh, of of IoT and new technologies, and and that is very important to look into into the user side um, and to to uh, have several initiatives uh, um, and really uh, and also the legislation. So we really have an, an ethics and privacy framework that also supports uh, that uh, trust is increasing uh, among users. Um, I don't know if Svetoslav uh, has also um, uh, a comment here, you know, I mean, we have uh, all the human centricity uh, here in Europe, some people, you know, outside Europe accuse us of, you know, trying to regulate something that we didn't uh, yet build, we haven't yet built, so I don't know if there is any comment from Svetoslav on the challenges of uh, digital uh, autonomy, and, um, you know, what is the... Um, um, what is the, the plan for from the EC side, right, to, to, to be addressed in the different initiatives? Yeah, I think the EC is having a very comprehensive approach in general. If you look at, I don't know, for example, the AI paper that we issued, there is the excellence and there is the trustworthiness. So we're working on a lot of legislation that will be managing the trustworthiness, and this is perceived as something important. Now, me personally, I'm, I have a technical background and our unit also is focusing more on the technical side. So I'm very, very keen on solving the technical issues and pushing it forward. But the commission as a whole, and even our DG, our director general as a whole, we are looking at both aspects. And if we think both of them are important, but I really hope that the technical part will be advancing fast and the, the legislative part with trust court, et cetera, will be just supplementing it and coming in time coming fast enough and, and, and good enough uh, enabling kind of effect to, to allow us to, to advance faster on the other fronts. Now for the other fronts, again, as Adrian mentioned, it's about putting all the stakeholders together and working towards the solution because there we can't solve the technical issue by sitting just a couple of POs uh, within the commission to solve it. So it has to be all the stakeholders working together and then developing solutions, agreeing on, on different interoperability and other technical standards, like, like similar to the memes, etc. So I think this is the way we are approaching it. And as you saw, we are using our instruments such as Horizon Europe, Digital Web Program, Connected Europe Facility, etc., etc. Some other like this uh, recovery funds, we are trying to, to steer some of them towards this goal and so on and so so it, it's this is the way we're looking at it okay thank you thank you very much very 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 clear i think the approach is is very clear and i think we can those that in the community that we are working on this we can feel this approach i have just one minute for a last question to francisco if you can answer with some headlines now uh, for this shift from cloud edge and uh, data space and so on what are the vertical sectors that would you prioritize? So which are the sectors that you see, you know, being pioneering there and, you know, companies making money, citizens getting benefit? Which are these sectors? Can you put some set lines? Is it uh, industry, manufacturing, self-care, energy? Uh, if you can answer in one minute, uh, since we have to close the session. Yeah, it, yeah. That, that, that's a tricky um, question because it depends. It's hard to measure, right? How do you know which one is uh, the most influential one? Um, the most influential one. You measure it on impact. You measure it on number of devices. Now, looking at several studies and, of course, uh, by the perception, um, smart cities uh, is certainly one that is, um, if, you, if you count it by, by number of devices, uh, industrial in IoT. You should say that. We are in our <laughs> festival and you should say that. So next one. <laughs> and industrial industrial IoT is also a quite important player. And um, yeah, you're you're pretty uh, close to the answer with your examples because connected health, uh, and smart healthcare, and energy are also the top four. If I would have to point to uh, specific sectors, yeah. Thank you, Francisco. In one minute, our time is up. So what I want to say is I want to thank everybody for the participation. I want th to thank uh, the NGIOT project for all the contribution to the community during the last couple of years. And I want to conclude by saying that uh, we have continuity. So we have the um, EU IOT project um, 
uh, where I am involved and uh, Martel, of course, uh, uh, my company, Intrasoft, and we are taking over the activities. So the, 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 the website will remain live, the event will continue, roadmaps we are gonna publish, we are doing things on open source, we are doing things on, on training and skills. So we will still continue to uh, animate the community, support the projects and give uh, valuable information and uh, service. So uh, NGIOT will be still alive with, a, with, a, with another uh, facet. It's the EU uh, IOT CSA and I'm really looking forward to meeting you. So uh, Martin and our people, the floor is yours. Thanks for the opportunity for having me. Thank, thank you so much, uh, John, also for ending on time. But, but Francisco, you were asked about what's the most important sector. I think in this context, it's easy because it's smart city communities. That's where everything comes together, right? And I think if you read the roadmap, you will also see this influence actually in there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the virtualization taking place. Thank you so much, John. Thanks to the colleagues and uh, see you.